We're calling to order again the meeting for Monday, August 14th, 2023. Please stand for prayer. Do you want to do this, George? Huh? Sandy? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity and the right to form uh, our meeting to make decisions for our town. Guide our council to make the best decisions for our little town. And I would like to thank you, Lord, for the men and women who have served our country and made this freedom possible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, keep standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Can you do that, Chris? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Give it about 15 seconds before you do the roll call. 15 seconds, we're not that slow. William Ellis? Here. Trevor Saker? Here. Scott Oldham? Here. Pamela Samples? Here. Dan Swafford? Here. Approval of minutes for the regular meeting, July 24th, 2023, and the budget work sessions, July 31st and August 9th, 2023. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Dan Swafford? Abstain. Wasn't here. Pamela Samples? Motion carried. All right. Action to pay accounts payable, vouchers, and payroll. So moved. Second. William Ellis. Yes. Trevor Sager. Yes. Scott Oldham. Yes. Dan Swafford. Yes. Pamela Samples. Yes. Motion carried. All right. Next, award bids for the Vine Street Stormwater Project, which we opened those the last meeting. So, Mike, you want, you want to tell us what we got for this? Well, I think the short answer is uh, we picked Kreider and Kreider. Uh, they had the low bid and met all the requirements of the bid um, document. And uh, I think we want to award to Kreider and Kreider. Their bid was $1,174,355. And the contract that you have before in front of you is for $1,185,142. And the only the reason for that is because there was an upsizing um, with regard to the PVC pipe. The base bid was for an 18 inch pipe and it was upsized to a 24 inch pipe. So that's the reason for the difference between the bids, uh, the bid and what's in your contract. And it was a line item that they could choose and, and it's, it's for the sewer that has to be moved. In with this but Mr. Farmer and Rick Kopic and Andrew Miller reviewed all the bids and Kreider and Kreider is the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. And that bid, that pipe size went from 18, 18 inch to, 24. to 24. And there is some information from um, Christopher Burks in your packet there. Like, logistically on the on the bid yes this is going to be coming out of our ARPA funds is that correct uh, all that uh, sewer portion which will come out of wastewater uh, funds and so I think you know roughly like 1.09 million will be ARPA and the rest will be wastewater we're all set on that then. pardon we've got everything ready to be covered on that yes tonight. right <laughs> So the well is dry for ARPA money pretty much after this. Yes, everything else has been uh, spoken for, and I can send you the ARPA plan. It's easy to read, and it kind of reiterates what we decided on the top. Do we have to update that plan? No, no. this okay. all fits within our plan so far. Okay. All right, any public comment? This is probably the biggest thing on the agenda and one of the biggest things we've done for the town going forward as a council in, in years, wouldn't you think, Mike? 
Yeah, I think the last time we did something this large was when the, in 2000 when they put the 46 pairs through Ellettsville and the, <coughs> the utilities and street department. Um, we um, contracted with NDOT to relocate all our water lines and sewer lines in conjunction with that project. I want to thank everybody that's working this, Mike, Kip, fire, police, everyone. So with that said, no public comment. Back to council action. We accept the bid award for the Vine Street Stormwater Project. Second. Liam Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Uh, next resolution 12-2023 to transfer funds. Who has this? This is a fire department request. Um, I think it was for physicals. Yes. So if you want to speak on it, you're welcome to. Uh, we're just moving some money from EMS supplies to our physical line. We've had several position changes that needed to be approved by physical, uh, and we just need to move some money. This isn't going to short you on the EMS supplies, okay? No, it will not. All right. Public comment? Back to council action. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 12 2023 to transfer of funds for the fire department. Second. Liam Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Scott Olin? Yes. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Next is ordinances on first reading. We don't, seeing none. Ordinance is on second reading, seeing none of those. Flood report. We kind of covered that, but Mike, yeah, anything? We covered it. All right. Envision Ellisville update. Dan? No? All right. Well, we're not having a meeting in August, correct? So, because we're starting the UDO process in September. That's okay. All right. New business contract for legal services. Is this Darla, Mike, or Sandy? <laughs> that would be me. All so right. you have before you two contracts uh, for legal services. The first is um, between the town and myself for services for the town council. Um, that calls for a $10,000 retainer per year, and my hourly rate is $160 an hour. My legal assistance rate is $80 an hour. The other one is for the plan commission. That calls for retainer of $6,000 a year. And again, my hourly rate is 160 and my legal assistant charges at $80 an hour. And that is for the next year. So starting today, if you approve it, through next year. Okay. Council discussion? I do have a question. Darla, is, how much, how does this change from your last contract? contract uh, was for $130 an hour, and that has been the same since 2009. Costs have gone up a little since then, haven't they? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Any public comment? Dan? It's cheaper than I pay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cheaper than I pay. <laughs> for the record, Dan Reary said that's cheaper than he pays. <laughs> Darla can get you her number after the session, okay, if you need legal... <laughs> Oh, okay. Never mind that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Back to council action. Make a motion to approve the contract for legal services with Dola Brown. Second. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Saker? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Architectural services for proposed public works facility? That you, Mike? All right. So, uh, Jeff and I, uh, I can't remember, but we interviewed a Jane York. Uh, she's a principal architect for Spring Point. And uh, they uh, sent us a proposal. We asked for a proposal after uh, giving them some kind of content on what we wanted in a building. And so they sent the proposal, which we sent digitally to you. We didn't print them out because it's a lot of pages. But uh, in this proposal, you'd find um, the, 
their profile, resume, expertise, project experience, scope of works, scope of services, fee proposal, and timeline, and references. And if you read this, um, <clears throat> it, it kind of speaks for itself about what kind of architects they are. They've got a lot of um, jobs that they've done locally, and, and, and so the pictures say a thousand words. But anyway, uh, so they've put a proposal together to uh, put together um, a design for a 16,000 square foot building, which we may, it may be 18,000, so I'll have to talk to them about that. But I, I can't imagine that changes much. And they've, uh, the proposal set, it's five phases. It's the schematic design, design development phase, construction documents, bidding phase, and then a construction administrative phase. So they also um, provide how they get paid out over those five phases and the timeline of the projects, 16 months. So the total is $180,000 and the uh, um, <clears throat> timeline of the phases is 20%, 20%, 35%, 5%, and then 20%, which we pay them be by the end of the 16 months. So the $180,000 is the bottom line for this project and Jeff and I are ready to move on and we, we strongly recommend uh, that Spring Point gets this job and feel real comfortable about um, recommending them. So. And I apologize to say you do have the uh, service fee and project timeline in your packets, but the way that they presented their information was in very faint print, so you can't hardly read this when I copied it. But you do have a better copy in your packet on your computer if you want to fit, refer back to it. The other thing that um, I wanted to explain is what I'm accustomed to is, you know, you get your bond issued, and after you get the bond proceeds, you pay for these things. So I ask about that, um, since this could need to have some prepayment before the bond is complete. And um, the Baker Tilly, Mitchell from Baker Tilly said that Lisa Lee will be our bond counsel. She, that's who's done all our bonding in the past. And, um, that she could prepare a resolution for prepayment out of sewer and then uh, uh, explain how to reimburse it once the bond is sold. So I just wanted you to understand that part that we can do it even though we don't have the bond yet. Yeah, as long as we get the resolution. Okay. Um, and we're pretty sure the bond is the one we're talking about that was in with this uh, water rate increase, correct? Well, the water rate bond or the water rate has in it enough money for the water department to pay back the sewer. We're going to pay for this through the sewer wastewater uh, utility. And then the uh, water department will pay back their share and it's in our rates. We also have to cover the um, street department because we're now the public department of public works. We have to cover their portion as well. And so that's to be decided how we do that. Uh, we have uh, several um, bond issues coming up where we're going to retire bonds and we're talking about moving the staff around so we may consider how we pay off a current bond for the town hall and uh, so um, there's a lot to talk about and it's all that has to do with bonds. <coughs> tomorrow at 1 o'clock we will, yeah, tomorrow at 1 o'clock we're going to talk to, is it Matt? Is it, Matt Eckerly from um, Baker Tilly, and they're going to run through a little hour presentation on bonds and how we might um, or, uh, navigate, you know, what we need to do and how we're going to pay. <coughs> Anybody wants to show up? Is it Zoom too? Yes, it's Zoom. Team. So we, it's teams. Okay, so we could send you a link so you could um, join if you like. But back to the. Um, business at hand, um, we're definitely going to bond for the building. <coughs> we expect the building to be approximately $4.5 million, and uh, we'll probably pay it off over a 20-year period, no matter how we... Um, so are we talking about a new bond or reissuing one of the bonds that's already in existence? Well, this would be a new bond. Yeah, we don't want to reissue a bond because rates are too high right now. But the current bond, at, this year we'll pay off the police and fire, this, mm -hmm. so it'll be off the tax roll. 
then next year the town hall will go on the tax roll. The civil side is portion of that is a little less than two hundred thousand. Currently, we're paying two ninety five to three hundred thousand a year. So that leaves a hundred thousand that we were, are, were, could have debt replacement in there to help pay the portion of the street department to move into the new building also. But there is some little caveats in there because the bond now still includes payments from police and fire, or police, no, water and sewer. So that equals about $67,000 a year. So if you add the 200 and the 67, if you put that all on the tax roll, then that reduces that uh, debt replacement down to about 31 to 35,000 if you just stay on the same playing field. And that would still be outside the levy like we are currently. So what you're saying is several options? Several options, and that's what we're going to learn about tomorrow. I, I just my thoughts is we hold off on this till we find out what options are available. I would hate to, for me. I would hate to to put the cart before the horse and say we're going to do a bond when I don't know if that bond's going to negatively impact taxpayers after we're talking about everything else. This is the first I've heard of a really a new bond for this. That's um, always been the plan, and we've already got our. But they're not paying 100% of it. Right, right. So the general obligation bond. What she's saying is that money being from the retired bond issue to debt service could pay this, or there's two or three other streams of funds that they could do that with. Either way, it gets paid, not from a new bond on the general bonding issue, but on water and sewer is what builds the building. But we've, we're, we've already increased water rate. Well, we've proposed to increase water rates. That includes the, their portion. It includes all that. Bond. Right. So, and you're saying that the existing bonds we have, we can, in a sense, roll those over. There, will there be an impact to taxpayers? Will they have to pay more money? Well, that's where we're going to. Right. And that's why I can't. I, right. With debt replacement, that would mean you just replace the debt that's going off so that it'd be right. a consistent tax rate. We may not, we may or may not be able to do that. We'll find out. I would like to tomorrow. find out if we're able to do that. Well, let's go back. Nothing increases, using this scenario, nothing increases the debt load to the taxpayer. It's how we wind up structuring how public works figures into the bond that water and sewer are doing, which is already figured in to the water and sewer increases. So that's, it, it's kind of a wash. There is no, no new impact to the taxpayer whatsoever. Hopefully, but we okay. do need more money that hopefully than, is than what the debt replacement. Me. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to throw a kink in the works, but. Um, I, again, I'm not sure how the hopefully comes into this because the, never mind. It's, it's a pointless argument because the debt, the debt service that's coming off the hundred thousand dollars from the bonds. Right. E hang on. Even if it's replaced with other bonds, still is thirty-one thousand dollars or whatever else. But some of that bond would be used to pay off their portion of this. So it's it's a game of how you move the shells around. It's not a new load to the taxpayer anywhere. This this particular bonding we're talking about. I mean, it's possible that if we do debt replacement that will have a lump sum for the civil side of the building. I, don't know I just have is. a lot of questions with this and uh, since we don't know exactly, but I mean, it's still a council discussion. Any other thoughts or do you want to solicit public comment? <clears throat> The only other option, the nuclear option, is we do not build a building big enough for all of us to be in, and the water and sewer just moves into a smaller building. But I think it'd be penny wise, pound foolish for 20 years from now. And um, well, we wait not only do we flood currently, but he floods currently too. So, you know, it. Oh, well, we wait two weeks to get some. And, and the other part, you know, 
in the new building, they want to move the water and sewer billing office out to the new building. Well, that's to be discussed. Okay, but that's what they would like to do. That to be discussed. Okay, so then that becomes an issue with what they're paying on this building. So there's several caveats to the whole situation, and for me to just make a blank statement that if we do it, it would not impact the tax is a little hard at this if time I, without hearing from if them. If I was saying it, I would have said, we'd like to move the planning department into the utilities where they're at now, which would make it necessary for them to move into the new building. As we grow the town hall, we're almost grow, outgrown the town hall in four years. And so um, I think it's essential that the planning department be up front and center so with all the activity we have, and so that's another part of this plan. And um, whether we do it or not, sooner or later we're going to have to have more space for uh, more, more people. And um, you're gonna, you can deal with it now or you can deal with it later, but we're trying to deal with it now. All I'm saying is in two weeks, the next council meeting, we'll have some firm numbers on what bonding, what we'll some have, options, yeah. Yeah, on I, what bonding we I can would do. recommend you try to lean into that meeting. I will try. Okay. But any public comment? Just that the next Come time we have this discussion, could she please have her mic on? We, I couldn't get 90% of it. It is things. on. Maybe you just need to have it right at your mouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other public comment? Yep, back to council action, because all we're talking about right now is the service, the service fee for this architectural firm, correct? Yeah, we want yeah. to um, engage them. Well, I would like to move to table this to the next council meeting. Second. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Saker? Yes. Scott Oldham? No. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Thanks. Okay. The next uh, agreement between the town of Ellettsville and Kreider and Kreider Incorporated. My, or is that? Yeah, I thought we did, but... I think Scott's motion covered um, approving the actual agreement. Okay. Then we'll move on to refund of cash bond, the amount of 2520 to Bledsoe Tap for completion of work in Greenbrier Meadows, Phase 3. Who has that? Good evening. Good evening. I'm requesting a refund of a cash bond to Bledsoe and Tap um, for completing 168 feet of sidewalk at in Greenbrier Meadows, phase three, the work's been completed and that was the only item in their bond and the total is $2,520. So it's a cash bond, so Sandy will um, do a cash, get a cashier's check and it'll pay any interest incurred okay. with that. Any council discussion? Public comment? Council action? I move we refund the uh, cash bond to 2520 to Bledsoe Tap for the completion of work in Green Byron Meadows Phase 3. Second. William Ellis? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Privilege of the floor. Is anybody from the public, would they like to speak? Seeing none, supervisor comments. Sure, I'll start. All right. Um, so I think, um, just jump in anytime you want. Um, I think we have a budget, and I think we're ready to move forward. Uh, we're kind of uh, smoothing out some corners, but the basic budget is set, and we know what we want to do. And we had a talk at the last work session, so. I just wanted to let everyone know that we're there. So if you have any questions, you should uh, talk to Sandy 
of learn about the budget prior to voting on it so we can move forward. And uh, the other thing I would say is um, the Planning Commission starts their efforts to um, work on the UDO next month. Um, it's not the Planning Commission. <laughs> It's not the plan commission, a steering committee has been formed and they will start the UDO process in September. That'll be their first meeting. There'll be a series of six meetings. And after the six meetings, uh, Ron Taylor and his group will start working on the UDO. So it'll be about a year process before it comes before you for a public hearing. So my point is, Board, the town board needs to know what's going on. They should um, ask questions, keep um, keep up on it. Maybe we can send a report every once in a while from planning uh, towards the board so they're informed. So when we get to the point where we can actually act on the UDO, you guys will know what's going on and we can vote on it. I know the budgets from the meet last meeting, there were cha uh, changes during the meeting. And I haven't got them all completed yet, but whenever I get the packets updated, I'll email you a new version to replace the ones that I gave you at that meeting. Okay, thank you. And I'll let the rest of the council know I'm one of the people on that UDO committee, so if there's any issues you want me to bring up, I'm your voice. I don't know who else from the council's on there, but and I'll inform you guys of any kind of where we are with things, too. Dan is on it. Okay, good. He's also planning commission representative. Right. All right. So, George, you got anything? No, sir. Chris? Kip? No. Nothing. Denise? Sandy? Nothing other than we, what we've already talked about. All right. Council, back to council. Any council comments? I have. Okay. Question for Mike. Did you get to approve, like, the hiring? You have the final approval. Can you, like, when you hire people, can you let us know? Absolutely. I, I think I can only hire part-time. Yeah, so, but yeah, no matter who we are or where we are, you should know who's. Yeah, because it'd be nice, because sometimes I see people and I'm like, do I know them? That's me. I, need to <laughs> I, would, I mean, I just kind of like to know their names. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that. And, and in fact, we oh, we're going to open a couple of positions in the uh, Department of Public Works. and Ones to replace uh, Scott Bruce. That just recently retired, and then the other one okay. is uh, changing from uh, part time to full time. Full time. Yeah. I'm just kind of like to know who the town employees are. Mm -hmm. It's like street names, getting so big we can't remember them. <laughs> well, I'll go down there and I'll meet them. I'll hit the hat and they'll not meet them. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. I'll do the same for the fire department, whoever. <clears throat> Thank you, Pam. That is awesome to do. Signed everything. Okay. Any other council comments? All right. This time, seeing no other business, meeting is adjourned.